Hello, everybody. Good little discussion in chat about why I do these streams. Whoa, and obviously I need to mute that. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> hey, thanks for the geeky for the ongoing subscriptions for two years. And hello, everybody. <clears throat> All right, so lots of stuff to talk about. Wow, hey, one thing we'll do here in a minute. It'll be time for the on-the-go COVID antigen self-test because uh, a week ago, a little bit more, last Friday night, I was exposed for a long time to someone who had COVID. My mic is clipping. Yeah, I don't know why it's pegging so hard. Let's see if this is better. Is that better? Audio is a little grainy. Who knows? Like... The mic setup is not changed, and yet it's obviously changed. So it might be a little better. Ghostily says it's still the same. I don't know. It was weird when I first turned things on today. Like, Streamlabs upgraded, and who knows? Um, not an Ethan stream without some tech difficulties. Yeah, and there's nothing... Obviously, I'll take a quick look at it, but it looked right when I looked at it. So, it looks right. I don't know. Like it's picking up the right microphone and whatever. So, I don't know, I'll live with it unless it's horrible. If it's really bad, and like multiple people tell me it's horrible, then I'll try and debug it. But otherwise, that's just a nightmare. It's bad. Okay. Um, is it better now, Pink Dragons? <sighs> Wor worse? That makes no sense. It's like we're in an airport. All right, let me see. Oh, I know what did it. How is it now? Better? Yeah. I bet it's better now, yeah. Tell me it's better. Turn it up, yes. Well, I turned it down earlier. <clears throat> but I bet it's less noisy now. Same. Rah. It's a little better. Okay. Well, let's go all the way here. How about now? More better? Less more better? Better. <laughs> All right. Well, I can either work on this or I can talk. So I'll let, I'll let the stream feedback tell me if I should keep messing with it. I think it's in a fine spot right now. I'll wait to see what 40PG says, if it's survivable or not. Bueller, Bueller. Hmm. I can reduce the gain a bit. Huh. Well, I don't know. Good old. Sounds super weird, but livable. Hmm. <laughs> Sometimes, uh, look, I'm sorry about whatever is causing the mic to be weird. Sounds really close. But I'm not really close. I'm like no different than I usually am. I don't know. Have to debug it. Don't know why. But thanks for the resubs from Awesome and from 40 Pink Dragons. Saturates. I literally don't know what's causing it to be cranky. I can try that. Is there any chance that's better? 
I'm just looking for different buttons that might make a difference. Okay, I'm not going to worry about it for the moment. Better. Okay. Somehow it was picking up from the headset. Okay, that's weird. It shouldn't. That should have made no difference. But if that fixed it and you all say it's better, great. All right. So you let me know. Um, here are the complex directions to take a COVID test. I was explaining that I was exposed to COVID a week ago. I've tested negative twice. So this is really just, um, I'm going to leave on a trip tomorrow. So before I get on an airplane, it feels like I should be nice to eat the people on the plane um, and uh, take another COVID test. So this is a different test than the ones I've done. So I kind of have to figure out how to do it. it. It comes with basically three components. The stick it up your nose part, which um, I'm getting pretty used to. This is the actual test strip that like tells you if you're uh, doomed or not. And then this is the magic goo. <laughs> you take this self test once a week. This will be like the 12th time I've been tested. Not for this. I took nine different tests over the last six months for travel and stuff. Last 12 months. And this is like, I'm just trying to make sure I don't kill anybody. So let's open it up. We'll start it because you got to watch it for 10 minutes. So somebody, and then we'll then we'll talk business. Um, but I thought it'd be fun because I need to get this done and I haven't done anything. It's nice though that they, this is cool. They have a diagram that shows you how to swirl it in your nose. But then in case that's really complicated, they have a diagram that tells you how to swirl it in your other nostril. So it's the same picture. Just, hey, here's how you swirl it in one nostril. And here's how you swirl it in the other one. Uh, just in case that's that's too complicated. Uh, you know, that, that like swirling it in different nostrils is too much for you. So, um, let me see how this thing works though. I'm like, what I've not done before is assemble the test strip. So, remove the test cassette and place it on a flat, clean surface. Well, we'll hope my desk qualifies but I'm not sure um, okay done peel the top off the thingy okay peeling done I have a convenient trash can here for all the extras This is our future, by the way, everybody. COVID testing for the next couple of years if you want to go anywhere and whatever. Um. <laughs> Ouch. Gisted is uh, not very fond of his anti-vaxxing pals. He's definitely down on them. But, uh, yeah, so here we go. So now we're going to open the nose schnod the the nose swab. Okay, insert no more than three quarters of an inch in the left nostril. So here we go. Fifteen seconds now. Somebody count for me. Woo! You'll this is film you'll probably never get again. Like this is special film here. What if I quit early? <laughs> I love that somebody's counting very slowly. All right, good enough. Now we do this side. Yeah, you were here. This is not, oh boy, this is famous footage. When I'm like a huge personality, the, the footage of me with this up my nose will be, you know, priceless. So, first time chat from a viewer. Now eat it. Yeah, Nidak, I think I'll give that one a pass. But it's good that it drew you out to chat ever. All right, let's see. Now that I've done that, they tell me how to swirl it in the vial. Okay. Rotate the swab vigorously at least five times. And then pinch and squeeze as I pull out so that I get all the happy juice off of it. Ew, gross. <clears throat> 
Okay, now I have to um, cap the vial. So there's a little dropper on it. And they tell you how to flick it. There are actually instructions here that tell you how to tap the vial right there. How to tap. Because if you need instructions on how to do both nostrils, you also need instructions on how to tap. So, um, and now I have to put exactly three drops on the sample thing. This is really complicated here. One, two, three. Okay, now we start the 10 minute timer. <laughs> make sure you need to make sure you tap hard enough. Well, I did try. Um, and then we can talk about how to read it. See, so 10 minute timer. I have it's 410 here. So you guys can prompt me at 420 to see if I have COVID. Um, but anyway, you know, they, they tell you how to read the test in the bottom. If it says C, you know, you're okay. And let's see. Yeah. COVID detected. All right, here's where we find out 10 minutes. Hmm, I may have screwed it up actually. I may have put the drops on the wrong side. I wonder what that does. Do I? Nor Normally you want to be close to it. Okay. I'm getting feedback that says get away from the mic for the moment. Take two steps back and leave the mic alone. All right. Seems like maybe I... Yeah, I put in the drops in the wrong place. Luckily, there's more drops. And... If I don't have COVID, too many drops shouldn't make any difference. <clears throat> All right, cool. So now we wait 10 minutes. Okay, people say it sounds better. Fine. I don't know why it's hitting so hard. Normally, I need to be right on top of the microphone. Something got fixed. I'll, I'll let it be. That's so weird. But it's okay. All right, what else should we... It's going to be weird, though, because I'm like not used to being far from the mic, but... Whatever. Okay, so you guys didn't come here to watch me take a COVID test, although hopefully it was amusing and it gave people a reason to show up. A couple things. So the topic of the show, before we do Ask Me Anything, is that I feel uh, good when I'm doing something useful. So I wanted to talk to you about that because maybe you can experience the same thing. So why do I feel useful? Well, as you know, I retired a year ago, like I left Amazon mostly to stream, to travel, which I do. I'm leaving on a trip tomorrow, and we'll talk about that a little bit. And um, to stream, to travel, and then to help people to do this. That's the point of streaming. So why do I feel so good? I've recently found two part-time jobs. One of them I may be able to say more about later this week, but I can say this much, I've taken a part-time contract with Amazon, my old employer, but for a very different purpose. Um, I don't know how much I can say about it, but I can say this much for sure. The goal of the contract is for me to be an expert advisor um, as they try and construct a program for uh, college students to teach them what it takes to succeed in the workplace. And so, that's what I already do, right? I talked to all of you about how to succeed in the workplace. And they want to create a program where they'll teach at some colleges, like a weekend class on, hey, what's it take to be successful in the business world? And I'm, I'm this, what they call the subject matter expert, essentially. The person saying, um, how? How do you do that? And by the way, thank you, Hephaestus, for the more than two years of perpetual support. I appreciate it very much. Um, yeah, awesome. It's like a very mini MBA in the sense that it's not at all about finding it's it's about the stuff I teach here, like the magic loop, right? The stuff. What do you need to do in a workplace to work well with others and to 
um, be successful. Woo! Cast nine. Okay, so hold that thought, Cast nine, because you're actually right on a topic we're going to talk about in just a second. In fact, let me just go to it. So the first reason I feel useful is I've started working on this program. And the reason that matters is two things. This is what's important. There's someone besides me who wants my work. In other words, I'm trying to help this person at Amazon build this class, and that gives me motivation. And so many of you know, I've been talking for a while about writing a book. I've gotten more written on my book in the last week or 10 days than in like the last 11 months before that. And it's because I have a customer. I have someone who actually cares. So Castan, congratulations first. For those of you who are listening to this on audio, we have someone in chat who said, last year you and Devin, which is Devin Nash, reviewed my resume and I got a dream job with that resume. So tell us what you're doing. But, um, and yes, at some levels, uh, one of our viewers out of Venezuela, um, says uh, office politics 101 is what I'll be teaching. Well, in a way, that's true. How to, how to get along in an office environment, although hopefully that's not all politics. Anyway. Um, the other thing I'm going to need to do is I'm going to construct a more structured way to help people with their resumes than doing them one at a time. And it's not that I need test readers for my book yet. When I get there, uh, I will definitely recruit from this community to check out sections of it or to help. I sometimes post in the general chat, I ask questions about should this be in the book? Should that be in the book? Are these questions, are these topics right? So I may do more of that. Uh, but anyway, I'm working with another group that I can't talk about yet. Hopefully I'll be able to discuss that on another stream. But I want to create a resume workshop. And one of the things I will need, we have one of these on my website right now, like one and a half. But I'll need to do some resume reviews. This is important. With people who are willing to have their resume used as a perpetual example. So it, already we have this on stream where your stuff goes out on YouTube but where you know it will be used as an example in like a workshop in the future. And second, <clears throat> where you will keep and share the before and the after. So basically, you send me the before, your, your resume, and then we review it live, and you'll get all this feedback from me. And then um, after that's done, uh, I may even review it again. Like you can send it back to me and I'll do a second review and then you do a final version that's had two reviews and we keep a few copies to show like before, mid and final. Um, <clears throat> and uh, so I'm not gonna do that um, tomorrow or uh, I'm gonna do it in about two weeks. And I'll tell you why. I'm headed out uh, tomorrow, I'm gonna leave um, for a camping trip in the Utah National Parks. So um, it's rainy here and it's snowy. I wanted to go to like Yosemite and stuff, but they're snowed in now. Winter came early and they have tons of snow. And so that's kind of out. Um, you could add to the sin format a thing to sign away the rights. Yeah, <clears throat> well, that's the thing, right? I'll, I'll definitely, I, I may ask people to like explicitly acknowledge that they know their resume is going to be used for this stuff and they're fine with it. So, um, yeah, this is, by the way, rum punch for those who are interested. It's, it's, uh, I had to think about what I wanted to drink quickly and I just very quickly put that together. Oh, you know what's making it sound like, um, this mic is way up to sensitivity and it's picking up the fan from the laptop. Normally it doesn't pick that up, but something, I'll just sit back and kind of pull it away. But that's, if people said it sounds like we're in an airport, somewhere it picked up the fan, I think. Who knows? All right. Um, we have like one more minute till we find out if I'm sick. That's interesting. 
it didn't read at all. It doesn't look like it's it's giving no result. I think that's because I tragically screwed up and put drops in the wrong part, so I ruined the test. So I'm getting I'm getting invalid because it's not showing anything at all. So that's my fault. Luckily, I'm not that worried about it. Um, do I still play D&D? Not anymore. I want to. Uh, yeah, all my D&D books that are right there. Uh, first edition, a little bit of second edition there. I miss it. Um, and I played a really unusual game, Rollmaster, a lot too. Uh, Seattle is depressing right now. Is that because it's dark? Yeah, well, anyway, I'm going, I'm going where it's sunny. It'll be cold, but sunny. I hope to visit one of my favorite places, if you ever get a chance to go there, is the North Rim of the Grand Canyon. Everybody goes to the South Rim of the Grand Canyon, which is very desert um, and near Las Vegas. Only 10% of people who go to the park ever go to the North Rim, and it's much higher elevation, and so it's more like pine forest. And so it's still the same beauty of the Grand Canyon, but it's um, much more, it's less desert, like not so much tumbleweed and cactus, more like mountain atmosphere. So I hope to go there. So North Rim is beautiful, need to go back. Yes, it's one of my, I haven't been there in 25 years. Um, I will never forget the day I was there because I hiked the Grand Canyon. I hiked all the way to the bottom and I hiked back up. Uh, overnight it's 14 miles each way so 14 miles down 14 miles back but uh, that was the day Princess Diana was killed was the day we got back so I can always check the date by just looking for the date of her death and it was 96 I think so I haven't been there since then so I'm eager to return 25 years later uh, remember the pictures for discord they will be there um, I was looking at the cell coverage map. I use T-Mobile. Timo claims to have coverage in a lot of places in the desert southwest. We'll see. Usually their coverage is shit outside of major cities. So we'll see. This map is like, oh, we have coverage everywhere. And I'm like, mm, I don't believe a word you're saying. All right. So continuing on this topic, and then we'll go into Ask Me Anything. I have these two jobs. One is to help create some stuff like helping with a resume workshop where we can lead people through resumes and, and how to improve their resumes. And that's why I'll collect some here in a couple weeks. Um, and the other, uh, the other place I will use the same skills is with this Amazon project. And the chance, um, the chance to do those two things has given me a lot more sense of purpose to get, because basically the material I need for my book, like the stuff I've been not getting around to writing is what both these projects need. And so it's motivating me to write. So I'm spending like an hour a night on average writing. So when I said, you know, the topic is usefulness makes me happy, apparently being useful to people is a much bigger motivator than I thought because I've been happier the last week than I've been in a long time. And I'm not an unhappy guy, but like I felt like, oh, wow, I'm in the groove. So here's the takeaway for all of you bothered to show up. Having a customer who cares about your work will make a huge difference in how happy you are. And so if you don't have that, you can go find it. Yeah, so this test is useless. It doesn't look like uh, I have COVID, but it also doesn't look like I don't. So I don't know. I'll show it off. I screwed it up. See, here's what I did. It's hard to see, but there's a hole up here at the top. And I was supposed to put the drops down there. So what's really funny about this, right, is I was busy mocking how the directions were for morons. And then I turned out to be the moron. Oh, well. Luckily, it doesn't matter, uh, but sad and funny, own it. When you screw something up like that, particularly live on tape, you have to own it. <laughs> the test had one job and I couldn't get it right. That's right. Oh, well. 
So these things are cheap now, by the way. If you do, like, not super cheap, but they're about 20 bucks. So if you do think you have COVID or been exposed to someone, at least you have, like, a, a way out. You can find out. Um, and I've taken two other tests, which I did not screw up because um, they were of a different style. And I was negative on both of those. <sighs> so there you have it. <clears throat> All right, cool. So much for that. All right. Is there anything else I have to say about this? Oh, one more thing. There is a question. I posted on LinkedIn. I've told some people, look, in chat early, before there were a lot of you here, somebody was like, why do you do these streams if they're only for us? It's because I'd like to hang out with you and answer your questions and be helpful to you. So enjoying being helpful in part has to do with being helpful to this crew and this audience which is why you should join the Discord, because I'm there quite frequently and I'm here quite rarely. But I've nagged you all about this, which is follow me on LinkedIn. When I do a post on LinkedIn, um, about 40,000 people read it. And as much as I love this audience, right now there's about 80 viewers. So that's like 0.02% or 0.2%, I think 0.2% of the of the coverage and so i talk to you all because you give me feedback and you give me when my ideas are crap uh you tell me hey ethan that's not right which i don't get as much on linkedin but if you really want to see my best thinking it shows there and yes linkedin is very important for business uh, but here you have highly engaged listeners as you say you chat so uh I stream here as a part of that being useful and getting feedback, but if you really want the best writing, uh, also make sure you take advantage of the other stuff I do because I can't help but invest where the return is. My goal is to share my knowledge with as many people as possible to help as many people as possible. You had uh, Cast9 here who said, hey, last year I reviewed his resume with Devin and he got his dream job. Um, So, <clears throat> and uh, Joy PD66, hold your question and repeat it here in a few minutes because we're going to go to Ask Me Anything in a second and I'll take your question, but it may have um, uh, gone away. Anyway, Cast9, basically, I managed to help him or her. Um, I want to do that for more people in LinkedIn's high impact. So, uh yeah, we'll actually use the question widget. We haven't used that in forever. So we have an extension. You can find it on the edge of your screen, on the right-hand edge of whatever you're watching or on mobile. There's actually a viewer questions tool. Um, I don't know if any of these are old, but some people have put them in. Uh, and so there's three questions in there with one vote each. Uh, but all the viewers, here's your chance. We're gonna open up, ask me anything. You can put in questions and you can vote on them. So I haven't done this in a long time, but I've basically finished what I wanted to talk about and I've only been on 30 minutes. So I'm gonna do 30 minutes of answering these questions, but you all have to go vote. And um, I will answer questions for at least half an hour on kind of anything you want. Um, the only thing I won't talk about, except right now, is, uh, as I'm sure everybody watching here knows, Twitch got massively hacked 10 days ago, two weeks ago. What a nightmare for them. I have a friend um, who works there. I have many friends who work there. Um, I won't say anything about what they've said, but I was there six years ago when there was a different hack. And, you know, just looking at the public news, I have no special knowledge. Twitch got owned hard and deeply. And what a nightmare for the people who work there who have to patch that um, because their source code got taken, which means that's like if you play football, uh, you uh, American football or any other sport like that that has a playbook, the enemy now has your playbook. Um, and so uh, like other people have the playbook for, for how you're trying, you know, they have your code. So they can just look through it for places you effed up and then attack them. And uh, 
I'm not excusing some of the dumb things that appear to have been done at Twitch. I'm just saying like, wow, um, imagine trying to win an American football game uh, when the other side knows your playbook, has it, or an American baseball game where the other people can read your signs. Soccer is a little bit more fluid, right? Global football, uh, because there's not as much of a playbook. But man, uh, it's tough. So since I left Amazon, go ahead and put it in the tool. This is an Ask Me Anything, Krepster. I'd love to answer that. Um, uh, Taryn Fear says, I thought it was an old repository. I honestly don't know. Maybe it was. But code doesn't change that fast. A company that big, like even if it was a year old or two years old, probably 60% of the code's the same, which is still a huge danger. I mean, that's a guess. How will this uh, hack affect Twitch in the future? Presumably a lot more emphasis on security. Um, right, I mean, uh, Twitch has matured as a business and I think now they'll invest a lot more in being secure. So who are the suspected hackers? I don't know. Um, is some group that posted it, so I'm sure it's out there in the news. But what Brian Carlson 1985 says is right. Code change management can take months in large organizations. All right, we have a couple questions of three votes. There are 80 of you here. So three votes from 80 people is lame. So, uh, look, if you're sitting at home, you don't have, like, follow the extension and give me a couple more votes on what you want to talk about. And then I'll start jumping in. Uh, and um, the instructions on how to vote and how to find the question thing are right there. Uh, oh, we have one at four out of 80. So 5% of you want to talk about that. Uh, but no, go ahead and give me some feedback, and then I will go and uh, start chugging through the questions. Um, and so, but anyway, I'll just say it sucks to be on the far end of a hack like that, um, because these people had all these project plans that now their project plan for some amount of time, probably until the end of the year, is fix security holes. And one of the questions that went by in chat was about being an engineer. Um, uh, how do we use this tool on mobile? Uh, JoyPD66, maybe somebody in chat can answer that, but it is possible to get to the extension and use it on mobile. I haven't done that in a while, so I can't talk you through it live. But someone who's done it on chat before can. Oh, now we have lots of votes. Woo, you guys are spawned. I love that. So when I uh, the stream began, you asked why do I? Somebody asked why do I bother? Given the the, the relatively small audience, it's because you interact, and I love that. Thank you. All right, let me jump in. Keep voting, keep asking questions, uh, and I will answer the high vote questions. But uh, forty PD, go ahead and pin the first question. Yep, there we go. I'm working at a startup as a community manager. Originally, I was an intern that was unpaid. Now I get paid but I feel less motivation now than I did before. Um, shouldn't I be more motivated now? Okay, this is a great question. So you're learning a, a tough lesson, which is money doesn't supply very good motivation. Money is what we call a hygiene factor in work. Um, money is a um, hygiene factor. So what the hell does that mean, hygiene factor? It means it's like having a chair, having air. Um, it, it's required so that you can survive, but money doesn't motivate people very much. So you can run this test in your head, all the viewers can. We'll try it. Everybody in chat, now be honest, somebody will type in a million dollars or whatever. Whatever it is you make, how much more than what you make would you like to make where you'd feel like, okay, I'm not a millionaire, but like I'm now making good money. So type the figure in chat. I'm gonna ignore all the people who type in a million or 500,000, but like honestly, if you had to make more money than what you are, uh, or you know, somebody says zero, which is fine, that's great, congratulations. But if you feel at all like you need to make more money, how much more would be like, oh, now I'm doing well? 50% uh, more, so that's a percentage. 
So that's a lot. Um, so big numbers, 250. So that's how much you want to make. Those are your salaries. What I'm asking is like how much more? What's the difference? So 10,000 more than what you make, 20,000 more than what you make, 5,000 more than what you make. Um, so a lot of people are uh, saying 50 ish. 30, 20, yeah, 20K more. I like, thank you, by the way. It tells me now, Twitch has gotten a little better. Streamlabs has. It tells me who are the first time chatters. So Minxless and Purpleton, thank you for chiming in. Wow. Awesome. A 210% increase. All right. Whatever would let you move out of the woods. So historically, some of you want more than that. It's good. You're ambitious. Historically, no matter what people make, their answer to this question is 20K more. So if they make 20K, they want to make 40. If they make 120K, they want to make 140. Um, some of you, uh, you know, my figures are old, so they may need some inflation. But the point is, everybody wants to make like 20, 30K more than they're making. But it turns out, that doesn't make people happy. So I am answering this first question. They get the money and then they adjust their lifestyle to it. And then they're six months, like when they get, you know, if I gave each of you a 30K raise, short term, you'd be like, yeah. And then like six months later, you'd be right back where you were. Um, you might have less, a little bit less stress, but your happiness, some of the negatives might be gone, but your positives it turns out would not be like any different, more or less. Um, yeah, but it turns out even lots more money won't totally make you happy. The point is money and the ability to buy things, answering this question that we're asking about, it's not going to make you feel motivated because once you have that salary, you're not expecting anyone to take it away. And so, uh, because nobody's going to like take it back from you, it doesn't help you be motivated. So I'm working as a start at a startup as a community manager. Um, you're less motivated. You have to look somewhere else for that. What caused your motivation to change? Is it you've gotten bored with the work? Is it that now that you're paid, you feel like you have to do it? Whereas as an intern, you felt like you got to do it. Like it's quite, it's quite possible that as an intern, you're like, look, I get to do this cool thing. They're letting me do it. And once they paid you, it became like, oh, this is my job. I have to do it. There's an interesting story here. It goes way back in history. Um, I forget where it was, but basically there was this uh, club or park or whatever that had all these very rich country club members. And like one day a year, they did a charity event. And all these extremely wealthy people would drive horse-drawn carriages to take people around this park. And I don't remember the details, but basically you had all these people, key point, that you could never pay enough to be a carriage driver, right? Because they didn't need to work. And so, and they certainly, you know, they were bankers and whatever. So to like drive smelly horses around and take like kids around a park, you could never pay them to do it, but they would volunteer. So our relationship with money is very weird. So for example, it's public on my website, so it's not any super secret. When people want me to coach them privately, not like I do for you guys here, but where I coach people privately one-on-one -on -one, um, and take an hour of my time or two hours of my time, often every other week for a long time. Uh, and um, work them up in their career one-on-one. -on -one. I get paid a lot of money to do that. My, my public rate I listed is $875 an hour. Huge amount. Don't deny it. Don't feel bad about it. Because... Somebody asked me how I spend my time. I don't want to do a lot of that coaching. So for people who want free coaching, there's YouTube, there's LinkedIn, and there's Watch Me Here on Twitch, all of which I love to do. For people who want me to dedicate my time to one person, they get to pay. Um, I'm doing some of this other work I talked about that I feel really good about, working with Amazon, 
working uh, with this other program for much less money or even free because it meets my mission. So they're not paying me anywhere near as much or even anything. Um, the reason I bring that up is you'll do things if you don't want to do it or if, if it's not something you want to do a lot of, huge price to get you motivated to do it. If you do want to do it, you might do it for free. So that's just an example. Um, yeah. Hmm. I will say it's so funny what words auto mod catches. Somebody tried to um, somebody tried to put in. Uh, we had to just allow lifestyle creep. Cast nine. It, it didn't like the term creep. It thought you were going to yell at somebody. But earlier there was something that had the word put in it, and it didn't like that either. Who knows? Auto mod is super protective. So no creeps here. No pudding. You can't put anything. Um, <clears throat> all right. Uh, so I hope I answered this. You have to look for your motivation elsewhere and you have to look for why your motivation changed. So I answered that to death, which I often do. Next. Ooh, here we have a lot of votes on this. Senior data engineer in a small town, big hospital. Okay, Kristen, this question is apparently for you. 10 years experience, four years at the company, competition paying 40 to 50% higher. Love my team, but the difference would be life-changing. 100% remote since COVID. Suggestions? Yeah, sure. Um, will, so do you have an active job offer from the other company? Um, I mean, what I would do, this is super candid. I would go to your management. Okay. I would make sure you could get the other job either by actually interviewing for it or by feeling out and knowing or having the confidence you could get that job. I would then go to my management and say, look, here's the deal. I can be paid 50% more to work somewhere else. I have the offer in hand or I know I can get it and I'm going to take it because as much as I love y'all, I have to take care of my family and myself, and this is life-changing money to me. So I want to tell you honestly, I love this team, and if you can match that offer, I will stay. Um, and so, uh, yeah, someone actually, Taryn Fear says, my favorite way to start that conversation is, hey man, listen. And that's true, it's not hostile. Look, first, whoever you are, uh, I did say y'all, but only now and then. Um, I'd say, look, here's the reality is I have to do what's right for me and my family. Um, and if you don't have a family, I have to do what's right for me. And I love this team and I want to stay here, but I cannot do it at what you're paying. What can you do to make it possible? What can you do to meet me halfway? What can you do? Um, uh, yeah, and so Kristen's a manager at not a small town hospital, but a bigger hospital, a bigger medical care system. And she just timed in, chimed in and said, I was able to keep one person by getting them high enough pay. They're a top performer. You know, here's the truth. Sometimes the companies can't or won't pay you more, but a lot of times it's flexible. So uh, we were just talking about how I charge a lot for private coaching. But I coached this guy and he was in this situation and he wanted to stay at company A and he had an enormous offer from company B. And by the way, he makes a lot of money. So his offer from company B was about $250,000 more than he was making at company A. And company A, he just went to them. I coached him how and explained Tell them what you tell them the situation, tell them you want to stay, ask them if it's possible. And they gave him like 225. So he didn't get quite as much money, but he decided it was worth the 25,000 difference to stay where he wanted. So he, in just asking, got a $225,000 raise. Now he made a lot of money, okay, high tech. Um, and look, good for him, right? I know a lot of people here, $225,000 total 
sounds like mind-blowing money and to get that as a raise sounds like more mind-blowing but all of this is possible and it's just a matter of understanding set it up with your boss it's not personal i'm not angry in fact i want to be your friend i'm telling you this so you have a chance to save me i'm giving you a chance to make the difference um Yeah, and you have Danny in here saying, uh, I have, still have a great relationship with my last manager after leaving for money. So Danny just did it. I wasn't going to bring that up if Danny didn't, but, you know, she had a chance to go make more money to do something else. I feel like negotiating can build resentment. Uh, depends on who it is. Look, anything you do can build resentment with the wrong person. There are some people who, look, this is human nature. If you all want to succeed, see, I'm looking right in the camera now, so this is golden advice. Pay the hell attention. If you want to succeed, realize anytime you bring a problem to your manager, they're going to have an emotional reaction. And when you go to your manager and say, look, I have an offer from another company, they suddenly have a problem that two seconds ago they didn't have. Or didn't, they didn't know they had, which is the same thing, right? Like the COVID test, as an example, although I fucked it up, until you take a test, you don't know if you have COVID or not. Once you take it, if it's positive, suddenly you know, and that changes things. Whenever your manager goes from not knowing they have a problem to knowing, they're going to have, they, they, they now have an emotional thing. So when you go to them and say, look, I have another offer. They go from ignorant, happy, wondering what they're going to have for lunch, wondering if they're going to get laid that night, right? They, they have their own life. They're wondering if, like, it's going to be Taco Tuesday or not. They're wondering if they're going to get lucky. They're wondering whatever they're wondering. They're wondering if their kids are, you know, tearing up the house while they're at work. Suddenly you rip all that away and they can't stay in their daydream of how they're going to spend the night pretending they're in Las Vegas, where what happens if Vegas stays in Vegas, and suddenly they're going to have to deal with you and your problem that you just brought them. So, of course, they have an emotional reaction to that. That's just normal. So, when you say negotiating can bring resentment, some people can't get past, you brought me a problem, how dare you? How fucking dare you come ask for money? We hired you, blah, blah, blah. Well, screw them. They're emotionally immature and can't deal with the fact that it's just business. If you have a boss where reasonable negotiation builds resentment, you're in the wrong place and it's totally okay to leave. Reasonable bosses understand that it's a competitive economy. Now, it's different. If I give you a big raise, if you come to me and say, hey, I have another offer from Acme Corp. We'll do it this way. I have another offer. I'm at company A. I have another offer from company B and they're going to pay me more. Will you match it? And I say, yeah, I got you. You're valuable. I appreciate you being here. I got you. And then three months later, you say, hey, I have an offer from company C and they're going to pay me more. Now I'm like, fuck you. And that's okay. I'm okay with that. It's like, oh, I see how you are. You're coin operated. It wasn't just about making you whole. You're trying to do everything you can at all times to, to push me and I can do without you. It's not because you're not a nice person. It's just you're coin operated. And, you know, some people are mission driven. The saying that managers use in this is they want to hire missionaries, not mercenaries. They want to hire people who are motivated by the work, not just motivated by the money. So you don't want to be coin operated. But other than that, it's fine to leave. And look, you have to take care of your own life um, by what's important to you. And I will say, if you don't get good at negotiating, like the money is out there to go get. All right. So moderators pulled down the question. That might be a subtle hint. It's time for me to move on. So pen the next one and let's go. I am a freshman computer science major. I want to gain experience early so I look better for jobs. Do you think doing cybersecurity for the U.S. Army for two years will help with my resume when looking? Absolutely. 
The answer to this is an easy yes. Cybersecurity is going to be one of the hottest fields of the future. Twitch got hacked, but like everybody's gotten hacked. Cybersecurity is a golden ticket into the future. And you want to spin this not as U.S. Army experience, but as military security, military grade security. Instant job, big paycheck, run around, cash the checks, wear your camo, have everybody say thank you for your service while they're at it. This is golden. Um, so, yes, do I think that uh, will look great on your resume? I think it will look fantastic. Uh, they can't hire security people nearly fast enough. So this is an easy answer. Go, go, go. This is like the field of the future because right now the hackers are winning. Because if you think about which companies and which people haven't been hacked, it's like nobody. Um, so uh, let's see. Kristen, right now you have me thinking if we have a Kristen in our management. Um, yeah, so Kristen's saying, like, people are going to come ask you this. People are going to quit. Um, you know, people, if you choose to go into management, here's the thing. You learn these key words that terrify you and you have to get ready to brace yourself. And that's anytime someone says, hey, uh, boss, can I get a few minutes of your time today? Always means a problem. Nobody, nobody says, can I get a few minutes of your time today if they're not about to drop bad news on you? Now, it may be bad news from a project. It may be bad news personally for them. Like I had a guy terrible story at the end of a meeting he said hey the meeting ended early do you have a few minutes and i'm like sure what's up and he told me he had cancer terrible but anytime someone asks you that as a manager it's going to be shit it it may not be shit that you have to deal with but it's going to be bad news pretty pretty much nobody's like hey do you have a few minutes today Hey, I want to tell you, like, we're ahead of budget or what never happens because um, they feel like they can wait to tell you that or email you or they just blurt it out. But if they want to talk to you for a few minutes, do you have a few minutes today? So you just got to get used to those keywords and like have your calm, deep breathing ritual where you're going to get, you know, peace. So, yeah. Hey, guys, we beat quarter estimates. All right. We're going to move on. That question was great, but easy. Um, people should go back to voting because we have lots of questions in, uh, which is awesome, by the way. I love that you guys are doing this. It's so much fun to do these Ask Me Anythings when the audience is engaged. Yeah, he literally was by, like that, by the way. By the way, I have cancer. It was it shocked the shit out of me. And like you're sitting there and like, what do I say? Is it bad? Like, it turns out it wasn't, but uh, yeah, scary. Here's how he actually did it. This is years ago, so I can share it because he's long been healed. He's like, see this lump on my neck? And yeah, he had like a bump here, right? Like sticking out inside. Of That's apparently cancer. Like, hey, see this lump? That's apparently cancer. I'm, whoa so yeah and so even worse i asked him like so when did when did you find out how did you know he said oh the doctor told me earlier today so he's still at work this guy got diagnosed with cancer and then came and did this meeting with me and then is like hey can i tell you something this is cancer so if you choose to go into management, you've got to get limber on your feet to be ready to deal with whatever comes up. Uh, yeah, as Jessica says, he was still processing it. He was he was in shock. And but if you choose to go into management, you will have people walk in your office who are in shock. Um, an old boss of mine. And then I will answer the question uh, that got popped up. Um, an old boss of mine. Uh, she talked about two things that happened in her career. One time she had somebody come into her office. Now you got to go way back in time. This will seem like, how could that be a big deal? 40 years ago, 
different standards. Um, she had a guy come into her office and said, uh, hey, I need to change cubicles. Why do you need to change cubes? Well, I'm in love with the guy in the next cube and he's not in love with me. Now, this is before being out in the Pennsylvania workplace was it all accepted. But even then, if so anyway, like he's asking her to solve his love life. Could have been I'm in love with the girl in the cube. Didn't have to be a homosexual thing, which but it had the added thing of like but again, he's bringing his love life problems regardless of gender preference into the office. Like and not into the office, into her office and asking her to solve them or move his cube. So you just never know. The other one she got was she got a, a call. Um, she got a call from one of her employees who said, yeah, so I'm not going to be in for work on Monday. Okay, why is that? Well, I violated my parole and I guess I'm going to be sent back to prison. So I, I guess I won't be in. Sorry to hear that. Like, what do you say? Right. So if you choose to go into management, you got to just whatever comes out of people's mouths, you got to kind of roll with. Absorb it and say, oh, thank you for sharing that. I may need a few minutes to figure out our next steps here. Can you hold on? Like, all right. Question. Since you left Amazon, how do you spend your time? Uh well, I spend a lot, a fair amount of it, obviously working on projects. Okay. I have a life mission I've decided on. I reserve the right to change that mission later, but my mission, which is on my website is to pay forward the good fortune I've had by helping others with their career. And what I help hope is that by helping you with your careers, you will become comfortable with what you're making and how you're doing so that you can work on the other problems we have in the world and you can pay it forward. Whether that means you help with diversity, equity, and inclusion, or with climate change, or with save the whales, or with whatever it is you feel needs to be worked on in the world, my belief is we have too many people who are stuck grinding away trying to make a living, and not enough people who can be focused on making sure we as a species survive and don't kill each other. And so I'm trying to make more people who feel okay about how they're doing in life so that they can be involved. So I spend a fair amount of time on that mission. I spend a lot of time outdoors. I get the most love from being outdoors and from traveling. So I travel about one third of all days. I go somewhere, I go on vacation, I go hiking, I go skiing, I go overseas. Some of you know I've been to Istanbul this, uh, in September. I was in Rome in June and July. I travel, I wanna see the world. Um, and then the rest of the time, uh, I exercise, I like to stay fit, be active, and I cook. Uh, when I retired, my wife said, could I please take on some of the cooking duties? And so this stream will actually end in not too long so that I can go help with dinner. Well, actually, we'll take a walk and then I'll go help with dinner. So, so those are the things I do. Yeah, this hoodie's old. Somebody said sweet hoodie. This was from AWS reInvent like six, seven years ago. But yeah, it's got like the mage cowl, the like arcane silver. Who knew, right? Like this doesn't seem like something Amazon Web Services would put out, but I've always liked it for that reason. So anyway. Hmm. So what they did, they didn't give them to any of the employees. On the last day of the conference at like 3 p.m., they said, we have leftover customer hoodies and you can come get one if, they, if we have one. So I ran down and got one. <laughs> it does have Assassin's Creed uh, vibes. All right, next question. A good friend comes to you and tells you one of their good friends just raised a fund and ask you, this has got to be from Awesome. Awesome, admit this from you. And if it's not, who's it from? Um, a good friend comes to you and tells you one of their good friends just raised a fund and asks you if you want to go 50-50 with them. What kind of due diligence would you conduct? Yeah. This is only Awesome Patel would ask this. 
Um, before investing in a fund that's been backed by a bulge bracket bank with 100 million as a first commit, what red flags would you look for? So first, it's too long to even fit in the space. Like there's five lines of space here. <laughs> and second, it's like, I don't even know. He's the finance guy. I don't know what the hell a bulge bracket bank is. You've told me before, but like that goes right out of my head because I'm not a banker. Um, but he, he wants to like, and he's not in this situation. It's okay he's asking, but like, so this is basically someone's raising a venture capital fund and they want you to put in half the money. Um, and what would you do before investing with a bank with a hundred million as a first commit? Wow, I don't know. If I had a hundred million dollars, I'd worry about it. Uh, I am in this fund. Okay. Uh, should I choose to invest? I didn't know you had a hundred million awesome or even part of it or even any of it. You've been holding out on me. Uh, wow, I should have charged him a lot for the advice I've given him for free. You do, like you better start subscribing awesome and like it tier three. Come on. <laughs> the bank I get the bank put up a hundred million. Um what questions would I ask? All right, so just any investment. You're investing in a VC. I guess I'd ask how investment decisions are going to be made. Who are the principals? Who who like gets to decide where the money goes? Because if it's my money, I only want it invested in one of two ways. Either by someone I think is a hell of a lot smarter than me or by me. I don't want it in the hands of someone I don't know or don't trust. So I either want my money, like I've shared this before, I have a friend who handles my personal investments and here's why I trust him. I've talked to him and I agree with his philosophy, but here's why I trust him. He invests my money in the exact same things he's invested in. I only invest in what he's already put his money into because I know He's putting his own money there, all of his money. And that's the safest way because if he's not gonna recommend an investment to me that he's not invested in also. So two things are required, right? I'll get my fingers on the screen. Two things are required. Number one, the person that you're going 50-50 with better be really smart. And number two, this is covered by the 50-50, they're putting their own money in. So that's what I would look for. Now, are they going to invest? You know, what's your risk tolerance? I'm not an investment guy. There's so many questions here and so many people better than me. But you say they're much smarter than you are and they're putting their own money in. So, yeah, skin in the game. Where you get scared is where somebody says, I have a great investment for you. Oh, me? No. Well, you know, because of this, that, and they start dancing. I'm not invested. You want their money right there beside you. And the more of it, the better. That's what you want. All right, cool. Next question. Keep voting. Next question. What questions would you ask a hiring manager or skip level during an interview to assess whether it's a good manager or a team to work with? That is the best question yet today. It wasn't as much fun to make fun of as Awesome's question because just from the question, I knew who wrote it. But this is the money question for this Ask Me Anything session. Good job, whoever wrote it. Take credit in chat. Some of you will lie about it, but it's good. Okay, the first thing, I would ask them, who can I talk to on your team to get a sense of the culture? If they won't give you names or they're uncomfortable with that, um, you know right there. Uh, I see we have two authors already, three authors, and it's going. Uh, it's on. Prove it. Prove you wrote it. Um, <clears throat> I believe the person with the biggest sub and the most cheering wrote it. No, wait. Did I say that? That sounds like I'm baiting you. Don't bother. So anyway... I would ask, who can I talk to? 
Who can I talk to on your team to understand how well I'll fit in the culture? And if they're uncomfortable with that, run away. And that's also a great question. You don't want to talk to the manager. You want to talk to somebody else on the team, ideally. Not that you shouldn't also talk to the manager. The next thing I would ask a manager or a skip level, what is the biggest challenge facing this team? What is your style? What allows someone to thrive in your team? What causes someone to fail in your team? And by the way, I tell people this all, I was just coaching, so this is advice somebody else is paying me $650 an hour to hear, and you're gonna hear it right now for free. So aren't they kind of a sucker because they don't watch this, they're too busy. Free advice. I tell them this all the time. I tell people this all the time. Look, if you're gonna change jobs, ask some questions about the team you're joining. People don't do this. I get, by the way, if you're desperate, you can't get a job anywhere. You just need a paycheck. You're like, oh God, just give me an offer. I just want, I just want to be paid. I don't care. Just let me fucking work because I have a mortgage and I have credit cards overdue and people calling me and they took my car. Okay, I get it. But most of the people here, that's not actually your situation. They get to interview you. Why don't you get to interview them? They check your references. Why don't you check their references? So I talk all the time about networking. You need to network and find some people in that company or ask or if you interview with five people that day, track down the five people you interviewed with. One's the manager. Keep the contact information of the other four and go follow up with them and say, hey, how do you actually like it? What's it take to succeed on your team? Is there anything I should be concerned about? You know, blah, blah, blah. That's what you do. Okay, that's what you do. And if you do that, then you'll be able to find out if it's a good team to work for or work with. What's the manager's style? What do they want? What are the big problems? And who can I talk to on the team? All right, can you give me an example? What was the situation? Yeah, you ask, my favorite question is, um, I'm reading chat now real quick. Is audio being blown out for anyone else? Yeah, it's it's... I'll put the mic further away. It is being blown out. Sorry. I don't know what happened to the mic and I don't feel like debugging it right now. Um, can you give me an example of what was the situation and the results? Yeah, ask questions. Look, the first thing you're saying right in this, the fact, here's the conclusion of the valuable free advice. Just the fact you're planning on asking questions makes you a winner. Too many people take a job based on what I've sold you as the manager. Because if I'm a good manager, I'm selling you on how fucking awesome it's gonna be. And if you don't ask questions, meh, I get to tell the whole story. And now you're screwed. So, all right. Um, and yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to blow out the mic. I get excited. And usually I have to be right here. I don't know why it's doing that. Um, won't they be hesitant to talk to you outside of official channels? No. Most people, and again, you can get the manager to give them permission. You can ask the manager and say, hey, I want to talk. But people like to talk about their jobs and people will warn you off. If you reach back out to them and say, hey, I'd love to just talk to you a little bit about the culture. I'm considering your team. And if nobody will talk to you, if they're all like, ooh, I can't talk to you, I won't talk. That's a sign right there. If you reach out to three or four people and say, hey, I really enjoyed my interview with you on Tuesday. It looks like I'm going to get an offer and I'd love to understand some about the culture. Do you think we could talk for a few minutes or an email? You could tell me a little bit more about the team and what you enjoy and where you struggle. If they say like, no, man, I can't talk to you about that. If you have more than one option, go somewhere else. Next question. All right. This question's another book. Um, so we'll see. Hey, Ethan, I'm graduating BBA. So somebody tell me what BBA means this December. Uh, three semesters early, which is great. Uh, but now I don't know what to do after college. I'm applying to jobs. Some pay more and seem boring and corporate. Others pay less like BDR positions. Somebody translate that too. Sorry. 
Um, but at interesting startups or tech companies. I also have a business idea I'm currently doing a pitch competition for. My goal is to play a major role in an innovative growth company. Any insights are much appreciated. Okay, BBA is Bachelor of Business Administration. BDR is Business Development Rep. Uh, okay. Big Brother Award. All right. So you're a business guy and you're looking at biz dev positions. Um, so my advice here is always, if you can afford to, and it sounds like you can, follow what you're most passionate about. And the reason for that is, if you're passionate, you will feel good about what you're doing. Um, and that will allow you to do your best work. In other words, at the top of this Ask Me Anything, we had the person who said, hey, I was working as an intern for free and I loved it. I started getting paid and now I don't love it as much. Jobs that you love, you automatically do well. And if you don't love the work as much, then it takes self-discipline to do the work, which can be okay. It's okay to be disciplined. It's good to be a professional and be able to do work that you don't love. But all other things being equal, you will excel the most at the work you love. And it doesn't sound like money is a huge concern to you, which is good, by the way. See earlier discussion that money alone won't make you completely happy. But all of these jobs can make you tons of money. So you can take the corporate job and they'll pay you a lot because corporations do and you can earn your way up. You can go to some startups and... If the first one fails, you can go to a corporation later, but if it doesn't, maybe you'll hit a unicorn and become a gajillionaire, and then you can rain your money on me because you'll remember me for this advice. And the third one is, maybe you can invent your own thing, which should be what, by the way, if you wanna go invent your own thing, here is what will probably happen. I was coaching an entrepreneur on this yesterday because his startup just tanked. <clears throat> He's a smart guy, hardworking, but he made all the rookie mistakes. He was optimistic and whatever. Probably, even if your pitch comp works, probably the company you found will go nowhere and you'll squander a year or two of hard work and you'll end up with no money. But you'll end up with a shit ton of experience. So if you can afford to do that, and of course, everybody says, no, 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 my startup's different. Well, just look at the stats, okay? Here's the thing. Let's talk about all the startups that have worked out. So Uber, lots of money. You know, you don't want to take Uber. How about Coinbase? I'm sure everybody wants to talk about Coinbase with a startup and Robinhood was a startup and, you know, whatever, Tesla and fill in the blank. Well, yeah, we hear about the success stories. You don't hear about all these little five person startups who shit the bed, everybody maxed out their credit cards trying to make it work. And you know, it didn't. So like Danny and I coached some people from this channel who are trying to get a startup going. Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. And I was coaching this other guy. Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. Hey, Sean123, it's great to see you. Being in a startup is awesome when it's not your money or when you can afford it. Understand though, if you choose to go the startup route, you'll probably lose everything you put in. But if you're young and you don't have a bunch of people depending on you, that's actually a great deal. Here's why, you'll never learn as fast as when all the decisions are yours and when you fuck it up and have to live with that and you're wallowing because all you can afford at the end with your max credit card is cheap beer and you're in your flop house apartment with your two co-founders drinking cheap beer and crying over the fact that you're gonna have to go take that corporate job you didn't want, you will learn more faster than all these other people. So don't feel bad about that. Just understand that's a risk. So I would go do whichever one of these you are most excited to do because there are three great options. Go cash the corporate paycheck, Go try the startup experience where you might get rich and you'll learn a lot or go do your own startup where you will definitely learn a lot and you'll probably end up screwed financially. I know that sounds like, of course, it's a little tongue in cheek because see, the glass is empty. When it's full, you get better advice in a different way. Now you get really honest advice. But 
If you have these choices, you're in a wonderful situation. Pick the one you want to do. Next question. Keep voting. We're going to wind up soon. So if your question doesn't have a lot of votes, you can beg and chat for people to vote for it because we're down to where you better beg. Plus, I'd like to see you like really care enough to get in there. Real Jessica. Already screwed, so nothing to lose. Yeah. Game on. Okay, this is a weird question. I've never been asked this. 40 pink, pin that top one. This is a strange question. Whoever asked this, I love you. Okay, so this is one of my things. When I do these ask me anything, I love it when you stump me with hard shit. You don't need to stick to easy questions. Okay, awesome's like seven paragraph question about banking. Definitely not easy. I'm not that good at it. This one? fucking cool how do you act after receiving a promotion okay first thing do not go do a victory dance over your former peers that's really bad taste so accept their congratulations if they congratulate you but like do not rub it in on anybody uh, be humble so be thankful You'll never go down the wrong path by showing some humility and being a generous person. So don't, don't, either with your boss and your management or with the people you work with, try to take it well and like a decent human being. Now, that doesn't mean you can't be happy and celebrate and share on LinkedIn how happy you are. It's totally a great thing to do. But don't be like, yo, look at me. Now I'm the senior program manager. Bow down, you fuckers. Like, what? No one would say that for real. But if that's your attitude, it will come through. Second, your boss promoted you. Your company promoted you. They're now looking to see if that was a good decision. They're wondering. They promoted you on hope. They're trusting that they're doing the right thing. Don't put your feet up and be like, all right, I made partner. I made partner. Time to chill. Because they were counting on you to do more. So ask questions, be humble, keep up your hard work. But here's the basic thing. Cliff notes in one simple line. How do you act after receiving a promotion? Keep doing whatever got you the promotion. That's thing one. Keep doing it. Someone promoted you because they thought you were doing a good job. Keep doing it. You're doing a good job. Thing two. I love that Fighting Pickles is taking so many notes. Fighting Pickles, you're going to be a CEO sometime or you're going to come sue me or you know burn my house down because... I gave you bad advice, but hopefully the former. Um, second thing, understand what it takes to succeed at the new level. In other words, there it's different being the quarterback versus being the backup quarterback. It's different being the general than being the colonel. So go understand what does this new job require? Ask your boss, ask your peers. Hey, I used to be whatever, a paper pusher two, and now I'm a paper pusher three. How is being a paper pusher three different than a paper pusher two? And what does a great paper pusher three look like? Am I meeting the goals of paper pusher three? Hopefully your job's more exciting than that, but you get my point. Inquire. Now, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. I know I was doing a good job in my old role, what does it take to be good at this new role? Because I want to be good at it too. What are the new expectations? And then go do them. Sweet. Bam. All right. I want to go to the next question. Because this next person, I asked them to put their question in chat and they did. Or in the tool and they did. So I want to make sure I get to it. <clears throat> All right. Amazon is a demanding place. Any advice for a software engineer trying to, <coughs> excuse me, advance there? Yes. 
commit code. Um, this is a one-off answer <clears throat> for Amazon, but it probably applies to all engineers. Write code. Don't be afraid of writing some operational code and being quick on tickets, being good on your on-call, being focused. Because operational excellence matters, working on hard new software matters, and mentoring others matters. The key, though, is Amazon, look, I had a saying I coined in Amazon, results are the currency of credibility. I've said it all over. I think it's true everywhere, but it's doubly true at Amazon. Results are the currency of credibility. If you want to be credible, if you want to be valued, generate results. What we know about new software engineers is that those who commit code in the first week do better than those who do not. So it's true of interns, it's true of new hires. Basically, if you want to, um, people are not interested in your smart ideas, your opinions, they're interested in you. We used to have a leader there who said, principal engineers lead through code. So they deliver something that others are like, wow, how'd you do that? That's a cool example. How can I learn more about that? Can I see what you did? Learn through code. This is true in any job. You can either learn through the talk, bah, or here's what I did. So Amazon's a demanding place. If you're trying to advance there, do things that generate a result. Let the other people talk, do something, and then you do have to claim credit for it, okay? Someplace, I don't know your gender and I don't care, but Often women do things and hope to be noticed. That won't work as well. It's not only women. Sometimes it's people from collectivist or passive cultures, humble cultures. You want to do good work and then you don't have to be like, fucking hey, look at me, I did this shit. But what you do have to be is like, hey, check out these results I got. I want to share them with you. Publish them. Hey, group, I want to share. I shipped this thing and look at this neat data. Hey, I built a new tool. Anybody want to use it? Give a talk. You got to do something to put your results out there because it's results. But when I say results are the currency of credibility, it's really, I've never had to put this phrase in there, but I, maybe I should. Visible results are the currency of credibility. Your quiet little grinding away, fixing bugs in the corner. It's nice, but it can go unnoticed. All right, cool. I've drunk a lot, which means I need a restroom. So we're going to answer one more question that's here, uh, roughly, and then I'll scan the others for interesting. Um, all right. Next question. This one will, some people will be like, well, this will be interesting. How do you save for retirement if you make 100K plus typical salary growth over time? So some people are like, oh, you bastard, what's so hard? I make 20K. On 100K, what you do is you live on 20K like I do and you save 80K a year, done. Other people will be like, man, I'm just barely scraping by. I live in New York City or in downtown San Francisco. My rent alone is $90,000. I eat ramen noodles and I wish I could have a car. That's where my 100K goes. Um, this, uh, I think my mod is starting on dinner, <clears throat> so I have to go cook because we're not getting the question switch. But the question is, how do you save for retirement if you make 100K plus typical salary growth over time? And I'll do the switch myself if uh, dinner is in the way of moderation. But how do you save for retirement? Well, same way, look, there's two ways to retire. Way number one, the great way. Win the lottery or get in a job where you make so much money you can't possibly spend it all. This is 0.0001% of people. This is Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos and uh, you know the guy at Oracle, Larry Ellison. Okay, hey Renee, thanks for the sub. Um, that's most people. Or sorry, almost nobody. Way number two, live on less than what you make. So this says, if you make 100K, well, you got to live on less than that. 
But the same is true if you make 60K and the same is true if you make 500K. And by the way, this will shock some of you and it won't shock others whether or not you make the same. I know plenty of people who make $500,000 a year and spend every penny. They got houses, they got cars, they fly everywhere first class. They got to have the best wine, the best meals. I have a friend, he bought a ginormous house, like fucking enormous. It's beautiful. It's expensive. When I go to dinner with him, which I don't do unless he's paying, it's a thousand dollar dinner for two couples. So I've done it once. I did it one time before that where it was just three of us and it was 750. And so I learned, I'm like, you know what? Dinner is not worth $250 to me. So it's just not normally. So spend less than you make is the answer. And don't get confused until you're making tens of millions a year, people can spend it. I, I joked about this this summer. Uh, there's this yacht I took a picture of when I was in Europe. I was hiking and it was off the coast and I could see it. And someone here brilliantly hunted it up and identified it. Um, and uh, it's called the Flying Fox and it rents for three and a half million dollars a week. So no matter how much you make, you can piss it all away. Because even if you make five million a year, you can take one week and blow it all after taxes on renting this yacht. So you got to make a choice to live on less than what you make. That's how you that's how you save for retirement. All right. I'm going to look through these questions. So the one I just answered. Stand by. This the question tool <clears throat> appears to be wedged. piss me off all right uh cool um i'm gonna see if any of these others are exciting there's long questions i work in google ad sales however i don't have direct pm experience how do i best try to transition so this is somebody we'll do this one real quick uh for 40 pink dragons, I'm gonna run, I'm gonna speed run the questions, so I will take over pinning them. You can do whatever you want. Because I'm gonna do them fast. So when I speed run at the end, we actually have a special emote for this. Uh, it's which one? Frequently used. No, that's not interesting. Where's my emotes? Where's the speed run? This one. So for the that's the speed run emote, right? There, when I start a speed run. So here we go. Um, blah, blah, blah. Basically, they want to move to PM and they don't have experience. Um, so the first thing is ask, how can I do it? The second thing is ask for a project in that area. The third is self-educate on product management. Basically, you want to do two things. Try and get some knowledge and then start asking, how can you help out in that area? And so that's the whole thing. Um, and then you, you, you work your way there. The other thing is, Google's desperate for people because all the big tech companies are. And so you start asking about moving to that role. You start looking for a boss who, based on your performance in ad sales, will support you taking a chance. So learn the skills, demonstrate the skills, ask for an opportunity, and don't be afraid to switch companies. All right, next question. Um, I'm a second year BBA. I wonder if it's the same person. So that's apparently Bachelor's of Business Administration. Student trying to break into accounting. Wow, I'm sorry. Oh, well, of course, it's awesome again. Um, no, awesome's in accounting. I got an internship interview at my dream firm this September, but I was unsuccessful in securing. I'm sorry. Since then, I've been demotivated to applying more internships. Do you have any tips on bouncing back? Um, so I always talk when people are job hunting, I say, read the book, What Color Is Your Parachute? Uh, the tip on bouncing back is what? That success is based on those people who can fight through disappointment. Every success story. So you know that's what you need to do. So how do you do it? Mm, boy, I don't know how to tell you what's inside your soul. Uh, just realize like not getting it, your dream firm job first, there's a reason that happened, whatever it is. And second, 
there's a million fish in the sea. Um, there are other firms that isn't necessarily a referendum on you. Maybe the person who made the decision liked the other person's tie more. Maybe they were under pressure to make a minority hire and it turns out you're white. Maybe uh, they didn't like, you know, something you said or, you know, there's, there's 50 million reasons you may have gotten a no. You can't, what you're doing, I think, is internalizing it as you're not worthy or they didn't like you. And it may be just whatever. We take things way too personally. That hiring manager may have 50 reasons. And the other thing, by the way, and don't feel bad about this, sometimes you go up for a role and you are fully qualified. You would be a great hire. The problem is Moses, I won't say Jesus, but same idea, walked in before you and like you got smoked because there was someone on the market who was unbelievable. You know, I'll go to football again because a lot of people know it. We'll, we'll try to, you know, if Tom Brady, American football, or Lionel, Lionel Messi, football, football, I'm going for a position and I'm good, but they're available, I can't feel bad about that. Yeah, I didn't get the job, but I got smoked by the best person ever. You don't know. See, what you don't know in this case is who smoked you, if anyone, or even if it was just taste. All right, moving on. I'll do the move on here. Oh, it's another huge paragraph. I'm a product manager at Amazon and looking to get promoted. Good for you. But burned out on my current team and lost trust in my leadership. Okay, well, that's bad. I have an offer to work for a long-term mentor who I trust who says he will help me get promoted. I like this space, but the product is legacy. Uh, blah, blah, blah. It's trade-offs. I'll always work for the best boss if you're not going to hate the work. Don't worry about your resume as much as worrying about who's the best boss. Your boss matters more than the resume. You get the promotion. You move on. I would always pick managers, but key, you say legacy product. If you're going to hate the work, you're not going to do good work for your mentor and you're going to be unhappy. So if it's work you personally are interested in, fuck the fact it's legacy. If it's work where you're like, oh, this is so boring, don't go there, go somewhere else. So that's the quick speed run advice. Um, but the downgrade, like you've done innovative work, you can do it again. I wouldn't worry about the legacy image. I'd worry about can you be excited to do that work for that person? If you can go, if you can't, run away. I hope that helps. And good luck. Uh, at what point during the first couple of years of your career should you feel comfortable deciding your long-term plans occupation-wise? I don't know. Whenever you feel excited that you know what you want to do and it's your life mission, which will change over time. But um, when I didn't welcome, I see Yamat5 uh, from staff is here. I don't know who you are. I don't know your staff handle, how it translates to English, but I'm glad you're here. Uh, <clears throat> so thank you for dropping by. So um, at what point, it, it depends on when you feel like, wow, I love this so much. I want to do it for as long as I can think about. And by the way, you'll eventually get sick of it, maybe. Like your life's a long thing, but it's when you know you found something you really like, wow, this is exciting to me. And I want to do it for a long time. That's when you know. And that may or may not be in your first couple of years. Now, if you need to make a choice, you can make a choice to do the thing that's most profitable and interesting to you right now and realize you don't have to do that forever. I'm only one example, but there are many examples out there. I was making a living as a tech leader and now I'm making a living as a career coach. You can change things and that's a pretty big change. I made changes within that as well. I worked at startups, then I went and worked at a large company. Okay, have you ever discussed and presented a cultural analysis? If so, do you have a recommended process or format? Culture covers a... I'm just gonna go with no on this one. Um, I just read a book on it, if you want. I literally just completed a book on it. It's called Humble Consulting. It's by an MIT professor. 
I think. I think he's MIT. Edgar Schein, uh, S-C-H-E-I-N, -E Edgar Schein. Um, he's done more of this than I have, and he has some suggestions on how to do culture surveys. Uh, it's not a long book, and it's available as audio, so read that. Uh, what are good questions to ask a CEO? So um, this person says, what are good questions to ask a CEO? I'm starting a new job and have a chance to talk to him. Same questions to ask the skip level manager. Go back like three or four questions and I answered this. Ask them what their big problems are, what it takes to succeed, uh, what causes people to fail, what they're looking for. Um, so. This is a good question. Uh, what is the shortest time to stay at a job before leaving for better pay? The dead minimum is six months. If, if pay is your only reason, dead minimum is six months. Better is a year. Better is two years. Um, so I don't know how far you're into it, but like leaving, it, it also matters how much pay. Okay, if it's 10% more, leaving in less than a year isn't worth it. If it's 50% more, you go talk to your boss and say, hey, look, I'm really sorry, but they're gonna pay me 50% more. I would probably leave a job on my third day if someone offered me 50% more. Uh, hey, Maya, I'm doing great. It's been a long time since I've seen you, but thank you for dropping in and chatting. Um, I'm sorry I haven't gotten back and had a chance to talk to you and see everything about how your sanctuary is going, but it's super nice of you to drop by. Unfortunately, you caught me when I'm speed running questions at the end. So good news, bad news for you. I'll only be here like five more minutes because it's time to go make dinner. In fact, it's past time. I'm late. Yeah, so think Banhammer, who was Twitch staff and is now Amazon staff, says leaving on your third day is a lot easier on your employer than leaving on your 90th. Yes, but if someone did offer me a 50% raise, I would also leave on my 90th day. It's just, you explain to people, hey, um, you know, uh, I gotta, like, this is life changing for me. You know, I'd like to stay here if you can match it, but I understand if you can't. Do, 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 do. Any other great questions? What kind of advice would you give someone? I don't have time to answer this question in detail. It's about advice um, on, uh, on a job search. So basically, if you don't know what to do, like how do you figure it out, go read the book, What Color Is Your Parachute? It's a much more thorough treatment um, and it should be on my book list here. So you should be able to find it there. Uh, Okay, Ethan, I'd like to resign. I'm just reading the rest of the questions before I tap out. All right, so someone asked a really long question about um, their currently unsuccessful side business. Throw that in our Ask the Community and you'll get some help with it there. Um, and I may be able to chime back in. Uh, how do you think about passion for engineering versus moving up into management? Stick with what you're passionate about. Life is too short to do shitty work. As an engineer, you can make all the money you'd ever want um, and more. Um, the guy I said who got a $250,000 raise is an engineer. So you can get, that's just his raise. So you can make all the money you'd ever want as an engineer. If you don't want to do management, don't do it. Now me, on the other hand, I found management to be at least as interesting as engineering, so I did do it. But basically you're talking about choice between good and good, being paid a shit ton as an engineer, being paid a shit ton as a manager, which do you want to do and which are you passionate about? Do that thing. All right, I'm going to tap out, go help with dinner. Um, here's the thing, I'm going on a trip through the Utah National Parks for the next couple weeks. If I get the chance, Where'd the AirPods go? There they are. 
We will do a mobile stream if there really is T-Mobile coverage somewhere in the desert or wireless. If there's not, I will see you in two weeks. We'll do the resume show when I get back. So if you really need help with your resume and you're willing to share it publicly and have me use it for commercial purposes, then I'll, I'll let you say that and you'll get some resume feedback. This has been super fun. You all ask great questions. Uh, it was really nice to see a bunch of people drop in on a Sunday impromptu stream. This is why I still stream. I love it. Thank you very much. And you all have a great night.